Hello, how's everyone doing tonight? Today, whenever you get a chance to watch this video. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna uh, really talk about and actually go in depth on the network of the devil, uh, excuse me, and uh, what he actually does, how he even controls the world to begin with. Uh, this is just vital information. I'm still surprised that many individuals are still very ignorant about this. This is pretty common knowledge to me. And because it's common knowledge to me, it should have been common knowledge to you as well a long time ago. But uh, for some strange reason, it, this is not common knowledge. Obviously, your pastors are wasting your time. Uh, you can't really be naive to think that these people are in your best interest if they're Satanists. They're not going to tell you they're Satanists either. So uh, I've been dealing with a lot of evil individuals. And uh, honestly, it really does open my... I, everybody has... A, already an idea you know a general idea of what evil actually is we watch like television and things like that and it explains um and shows us like the, the the hearts of evil men uh so that in itself teaches us what we should expect when we actually are engaging spiritual warfare against the kingdom of darkness well but still many individuals still get in this naive way of thinking where they feel like everyone is in their best interest it doesn't matter i know we have common principles that everybody lives by like loving your neighbor as yourself uh but these individuals are just waiting in the dark to pounce on you to be able to uh destroy you and to get you to drop your guard uh and in short that's essentially what they're just trying to do that's their whole point that's their whole game isaiah 59 we're living in the last days uh, it tells us exactly why in the hearts of men during this time that truth is departed from the street and that anyone who tries to do something good automatically makes himself a prey. So obviously this is the life that we're living in right now is obviously everybody is able to see that anyone who tries to do good automatically they start attacking this person. They start looking for flesh when they start uh, throwing all types of curses and all types of uh, delusions on another person to try to get uh to obviously try to destroy this person just by doing a good work and just by doing a simple work as that's essentially what is actually happening the, obviously the context in itself is that uh in zechariah 11 and 7 this is like perfectly like uh divided uh that everyone eats the flesh of one another and then isaiah 59 uh how um how it says the truth has departed from the street uh, and uh, equity can't enter that we mourn sore like doves and by day everybody is just sad about the situations that we're in right now because this is what everybody is going through everybody has is being manipulated toyed with used and uh etc you know so everybody's basically everyone else is guinea pig everybody's trying to practice as much witchcraft on each other uh as possible before the last days which obviously the main foundation that you need to be emphasizing and prioritizing in your head is just to be fear in the lord you already know that the promises of god are 100 percent scriptural uh they're true uh and, and obviously they're faithful just because they came out of the word of god there's other things that are going to be playing a role in you not being able to um receive well not receive but actually be able to uh see uh, God's promises and God's uh, providence in your life, uh, which is just curses. These curses themselves are seals. They're seals of death. They're seals of uh, remaining undelivered. They're seals of, you know, obviously what you don't, the results that you don't want, that you don't see. Uh, this is the reason, well, the results that you want to see, uh, obviously, this is what's preventing you from actually being able to see these results. And uh, and in short, you just break these curses through the cross. It's easy, it's simple. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I could break these curses right now just so I could get you um, and through this video. That way I could get you started with and gaining a little bit of of uh, encouragement and to be able to see that this stuff is easy. And you don't really have to overcomplicate these things or overthink these things or even worse, overreact to past mistakes when everything has been forgiven. Uh, number one, the main thing that the devil is going to do is discourage you. And the thing that's coupled with this is obviously destroying your confidence because if you actually are confident and just in general, even with not even appearance wise, but 
health wise 100 percent, they're throwing everything they can at you to ensure that you obviously this is under the guise of superstition excuse me they're trying to make you feel guilty uh and they're trying to make you feel as as you know like you don't deserve to be good you don't deserve anything good you don't deserve any blessings and you don't deserve anything of that sort because of all the things that you've done god's not going to forgive you god's going to hold you accountable to these things because you're you're just the worst but obviously there's individuals in the kingdom of darkness who are doing way worse than you uh telling a little white lie uh, not to say that this little white lie isn't obviously frowned upon. It's not a sin. Obviously, it is a sin. You could go into hell for it and into the lake of fire for it. But, um, you know, obviously what these individuals are doing, orchestrating and organizing and networking pedophilia, they're actually molesting children and doing all this and more. It's, it's obviously directly centered at these children. It is their main goal and priority uh, and their parents to be able to ensure that they could obviously touch these kids. They're obviously putting these legal grounds in. They're cursing the parents. The parents don't really break any curses. They don't even get into deliverance. They already have believed and have been sucked into this secular lie uh, that God knows me. He knows what I need. I don't have to worry about it. There's no need for an active role. There's no need for initiative. There's no need for action. There's no need for any of these things because God knows and because God knows this and that and we're cool and everything is fine. But in reality, God wants them uh, to get up from off the ground. The devil is obviously pummeling them into the floor and uh, these individuals could, could care less. They're just still saying the same old things. God's got me this and that. Meanwhile, they're getting beat up by the devil. They're getting punched in the face. Their jaws are getting broken, and these individuals are still uh, holding on to this faith, uh, which is good. You know, that's good in itself. It's a principle. It's a basic biblical principle. But uh, realistically, you know MMA, and the other individual who's just beating you down to the ground doesn't really know how to fight whatsoever. So obviously, you can see that error in your way of thinking through that. You will obviously be able to beat this person up, but because, and to defend yourself primarily, but because you're just saying, oh, God's got me, and I got this faith, and God is going to protect me and my kids, you don't really do anything about the beating that you're obviously receiving at that moment. Um, so grace and peace be multiplied to you, and mercy uh, and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, be with you all and reign inside of your hearts. Now, obviously, I started off this video talking about the networking of the devil, how he's able to maneuver, how he's able to puppeteer, and why he's obviously uh, so confident in saying that this is his world. He could do whatever he wants. He could manipulate whoever he wants because of this, this, and that. Now, obviously, he says these things. He says he has the confidence with it because he already knows, uh, obviously, just what I just spoke on, right, the curses. Uh, he knows that God's just God's judgment is just it's perfect uh, you should be rejoicing in God's judgment just regardless whether you're on the opposite end on the other end of his judgment and you're getting beat down or just whatever right but um, obviously these things are good in themselves you have to take the good with the bad you have to take the evil judgments that are pronounced on you for your evil as well as the good judgments that are pronounced on you for the good or or just because God is good and he shows you mercy. Okay, so first things first, a fiery dart, iniquity. Both of these things are one and the same, realistically. Uh, if you really think about these things, a fiery dart is basically a thought that comes inside of your head, right? And uh, when you are walking in and you're obviously uh, living your own life, you go, you run errands, you go to the grocery store, you automatically feel this fiery dart. This sounds something that's related to you. It sounds something that uh, feels like it's a thought of your own. And so because of that, you obviously take the bait of the devil, which is just a fiery dart. So I'm going to need you to really think about and imagine it. Uh, imagine just getting hit with a fiery dart. It's essentially exactly what it's like. And then... Um, and then Maybe it's something that you shouldn't do. Like you shouldn't think something so negatively about someone else. Or obviously we were raised with principles, right? If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And just things like that. This fiery dart automatically comes inside of your head to try to get you to take the bait. So you fall into temptation. When you end up falling into temptation, 
You, there's obviously some iniquity inside of your life that makes you think in some way, shape, or form that that thought that you just had was perfectly fine. It's you, and that's obviously what makes it iniquity. But in reality, it was a fiery dart, which is a sin. You fell, you took the bait, and now judgment came, legality came, and now obviously God is going to teach you, and you're going to have to learn a very hard lesson of compassion when realistically... And all all of these fiery darts in themselves are on the basis of you knowing right from wrong your parents and just because um and just because uh you're all judged by the amount of light that you obviously have received so because you're judged by the amount of light that you've received you're not going to be judged more than that even though more individuals just played them they know right from wrong and so because they know right from wrong they they still choose the wrong because uh they take advantage of God's grace and mercy that he's not obviously going to kill them right away. This is written in Ecclesiastes how because uh, God's judgment doesn't fall uh, fast or quickly or as soon as you commit the sin, a uh, man's heart is obviously intent uh, and bent on doing evil rather. And, um, and because of that principle alone, this is why everything is running amok. But now I'm actually going to explain how the devil is able to control the world. Why he's so confident in saying these things that I control the world, this is my world or whatever. And uh, what you can do about it and why there's obviously a war to begin with. So obviously iniquity, this is the main reason why we obviously are engaged in spiritual warfare. Because of iniquity in itself the devil is able to wage war against the saints of the most high he's able to use another individual who's obviously uh like i mentioned earlier they're kind of brainwashed in it uh from a christian point of view from somebody filled with the holy spirit's point of view uh obviously this individual is is i was not in, in the right minds right we already know we've come to the understanding that whatever christ says we're a new creation in christ I and mean, just based off that alone we don't really identify ourselves with our old past because everything is like as if we were born again so it's just like i was reading in the scriptures uh in john 3 that you have to be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven uh through the baptism of the holy ghost and fire so uh through that obviously um the old has gone away and obviously apostle paul's uh aware it perfectly how he said that it's it's although we died so we're already in the coffin, we're, we're buried, and we already died because we already passed from life to death because we know that when we actually do die, we're going to go to heaven. So we already had laid our body to rest. We're already dead. And now, obviously, we don't satisfy the, uh, the pleasures uh, of the flesh and, and other things like that. But many individuals still get in this way of thinking, and this is where the devil obviously is able to creep in because there's some iniquity at root inside of this individual's his heart where they revert back to the old ways, to the things they used to do uh, through their old, uh, before they got saved, or maybe what the parents taught them, before they truly actually accepted Christ uh, as their Lord. and Or maybe they just didn't receive enough knowledge to be able to, um, uh, to be able to discern from right from wrong. And uh, obviously there's many different um, factors to, to weigh in, right? There's many different... Uh, reasons as to why an individual is the way that it is but mostly it, it is a hundred percent a mindset thing is how this individual views life what they view as sin their whole ideology uh and what this individual defines themselves to be if you already have identified yourself identified yourself as an angry person obviously you you know that you just get mad and other things like that but that in itself is rooted a hundred percent in demonic uh excuse me demonic um a demonic fiery dart right it is rooted in iniquity uh to be a hothead obviously is a sin right to be an angry person and take out your frustrations for your mess ups for your mistakes on someone else is iniquity in itself god obviously knows you he frowns upon it he, he doesn't want you acting like that and, and that's it in itself uh and so uh, obviously you're the devil is able to control this individual uh, through these fiery darts, through the philosophy that the individual believes that they are. They think that they're this and they think that they're that. You can't really convince another person who's not really like that, right? That, oh, I'm just a quiet person, so 
no, nah, I don't really get all hype or I don't really act like that. When the devil comes in to try to, uh, not that there's a sin to be hyper, but when the devil tries to come in to try to, uh, that's just an example. And it's the easiest way to, to be able to explain what is actually happening. You really can't convince another individual who's just naturally quiet, who's a bookworm, who just reads and, and does things like that, that, um, you know, that they're hyper individuals, that they have all this energy and that these individuals are just the, the life of the party. Uh, me myself, uh, I'm, I already know that's that's something that I have already been accustomed to. I've been like that. I hate parties with a passion. If you invite me to a party, I will seriously not even have a good time. And so um, uh, maybe that's my own sin. Maybe that's my own iniquity. Whatever the case may be, uh, I myself am not a party person at, at all. So th they wouldn't be able to tempt me in that manner and that way uh, of thinking where they could be uh, puppeteering me and using me for their agenda uh, to be able to get into a car accident and driving from the club because I'm drunk or getting into a car accident or even worse, uh, you know, getting going to a party, getting so drunk, I start beating my wife. You know, these things, obviously, there's no foothold or legality for the devil to come inside of your life and do the things that he obviously wants wants to do uh that god himself obviously sends to be able to test you refine you and in hopes that you obviously choose the right way which is realistically all that is happening christ is at the center of all of this he's the puppet master in no way shape or form has the devil ever been his own we have job one where even the the devil obviously listened and hearkened to God. How he said that you could do whatever you want except kill him. He said, okay, whatever. And he did whatever he wanted. He killed his family and all these things. So there's obviously some sort of um, control aspect of things from the devil. That he tries to convince you that he is his own is a lie in itself. If he couldn't even do that with Job, uh, then that's it. All the devils do is just whisper thoughts in their ears. I know devils are 100% bent on wanting to rip you to pieces, but there's, they still listen to God, and they know that they're not able to actually rip you to pieces because of the laws and the boundaries uh, and the lines that, that Christ obviously has uh, instituted uh, and has, um, has placed uh, for the devil and his angels uh, concerning man and the wickedness on this earth obviously the devil is able to maneuver through this earth he's able to control um another individual through these fiery darts like how i was mentioning if a person thinks they're a party person they're the life of the party they absolutely love parties they're obviously going to go to a party but little does this person know is that this devil has already set traps for this individual who thinks that they got it like that they already been accustomed to not having to deal with um you know, they already know themselves when they get drunk. They know that they wouldn't get into car accidents or anything like that. And because of that, this individual takes it a little too far. They have a little too many drinks. And then the devil uses this person. This person gets into a car accident, kills a mother of three who is just trying to have a good time uh, with their friends. And then that's it. And this person obviously is just in jail, has served time for murder and completely ignorant of what was actually happening in the dark and now this now obviously this is how the devil operates he's not able to use a person who just hates parties right so you're able to see how the devil is able to uh to puppeteer to maneuver uh and to really direct his own agenda in the second heaven uh that manifests in the first heaven for everyone that everyone is actually able to see so because of that um uh, because of that, obviously, um, you're you're able to recognize and see what the issue actually is. You're able to see that there's a solution to this issue, uh, and to this problem that realistically is just you needing to intercede and deliver individuals is from the iniquities that are fiery darts and the sins that this individual has accepted. Maybe it's just a belief that this person thinks that they are, uh, some type of big shot or some type of whatever untouchable i don't cry i'm a man and other things like that but these are strongholds and these things in themselves are 100 percent uh preventing them from obviously being able to accept the love of christ uh and to be able to um to stop being used by the devil now many individuals are still very 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 ignorant about this they're very ignorant concerning god's judgment and god's holiness and because they're ignorant of god's holy they continue living in this way of thinking and in this way of life uh failing to recognize that they're that they're actually being used by the devil 100 percent. they think well whatever i'm not going to hurt another person 
through my sins and through my actions, but the devil didn't see it like that. He's able to get you to hurt another individual unintentionally through your own sins and through your own uh, iniquities, even though you have no desires, no intentions. I just mentioned earlier about the woman uh, who... Um, who killed the other woman, obviously fictional people, right? Who killed the other woman in, with three children who was just trying to have a good time because she rarely goes out. These are sad cases and, and very sad instances, but the devil is able to to use that. And obviously in that situation and scenario, the other girl, she, she already knew, right? She already knew that she wasn't, uh, she's not a murderer. She's not a killer. Uh, but obviously the devil is able to use this person through her own ego, uh, through her own pride and through her own um, uh, confidence uh, that everything was going to be fine. Everything was going to be the same as it's always been. And I really didn't have to worry about any anything. Uh, completely ignorant of the real world that is happening in the second heaven that these devils are obviously orchestrating these agendas and obviously orchestrating these plans in themselves. And because nobody's breaking these curses, so because nobody's breaking these curses, these curses remain there, they stay there. Um, the devil continues to walk all over us uh, and continue to uh, to to reign his reign on his kingdom on the face of this earth. Now, obviously, that's the solution to this problem uh, is to just break these curses and to actually deliver these people. And obviously, you have to intercede. This is called an intercession. Because you actually have the ability to be able to break all of these curses, especially for their life, and to be doing it in a strategic manner against the devil and his angels and against the devil and his agents, uh, you're obviously going to win because of the legalities that are obviously they're non existing. You're casting out the devil, you're breaking the curses. Well, you don't have to know these individuals by name, what they look like or anything like that, but just have the faith that obviously you're going to be interceding strategically uh, against the devil and his angels uh, through this principle in itself. Because this is essentially why we have war on the face of this earth, um, why the devil wages war against the saints and he uses another person to come inside of your life um, to obviously harass you and persecute you and all types of things and and things that you honestly don't like and things that you obviously are tired of uh but this is also something that you need to understand as well that because christ is a king you need to be doing all of the work that christ would want to do but he's not going to because you're his servant so you need to really do all the work that christ himself would do and actually serve christ and be a servant uh in in the second heaven because there's many things that Christ himself wants to do, he wants to be able to do, uh, but you're failing to equate that you're supposed to be serving him, and you're supposed to be his hands uh, in that instance, and in your entire life while you're walking here on the face of this earth, whether for good, and you know, just keep it simple, right, all of you are mortals, all of you are men, you're created through however you were created, through man and, and wife, and Christ himself wasn't created like that. He was created through the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, neither was I. I was not created through uh, through the power through through the power of men and women. No, I was created through the, the actual power of of Jesus Christ. So um, I don't have a father. I know it sounds sad, but these are just revelations that Christ himself has already given to me. Uh, just like how Christ they found him crazy. Uh, but these things themselves are just, you know, obviously revealed to me and, and other things like that. So um, that's it in itself. That's you guys. You, you're created like that. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so there's not really anything special about you. There's not really anything that anyone can say. You're his servant. All of you are, are under the same premise and under the same guidelines that you must be serving Christ. You must be serving him at all times and you can never view it in a manner where how Christ is going to serve you at any times. These things are just incompatible. In all honesty, although Christ himself was patient with you, he gave you mercy, he gave you graces. Uh, meanwhile, you attain to this knowledge this is not uh, you have the understanding now to be able to let that way of thinking go that you need to really serve christ there's many deceivers that call themselves christians that are pastors who are specifically targeting god's sheep for that purpose alone to try to get them convinced that that um 
that Christ wants to bless them. Christ wants to protect their finances. Christ is going to serve you. You have to receive it, name it, and claim it, and you'll actually get it. So obviously there's faith behind it, but this is obviously truth mixed with lies. Uh, and all of it is under the premise that uh, Christ is going to serve you. Christ wants to bless you. Christ wants to minister to you. And your angels are the ones that are ministering to you. This is the reason why you get words of knowledge, words of wisdom, words of encouragement, uh, whatever the case may be. There are angels that are obviously serving you because you're an heir to salvation. And because they serve you, it's as if they're serving Christ himself. So this is essentially what was inherited for everyone on the face of this earth through Christ. This is what belongs to you. In the same manner how Christ was walking the face of this earth, and they were ministering to him because he was the son of God. Um, this is what obviously uh, is, already has been explained, explained in, the, in the scriptures themselves. How before we were dead, we were trespassers, we were enemies of God, but now we're bought, redeemed, we're children of God, so now we're viewed as in Christ and sons of God himself. So all of us have the same spirit. All of us have the same essence as Jesus Christ himself. Uh, but we're all our own persons. Every star in itself has a different glory. Every star in itself is different in itself. But nevertheless, all stars are still stars. That's the same principle that you guys are under. Um, so all of you are sons of God. And because you are sons of God, you get everything and absolutely everything that christ himself obviously received while he was walking on the face of this earth his life is only meant to obviously show you um and give you the example of what your life is obviously supposed to be while you're walking here on the face of this earth now the main things that i could point out to what uh, now that christ obviously um had while he was walking on the face of this earth and did was he prayed uh he taught and he didn't teach on the pieces of men. He was bold. Uh, and he obviously engaged in spiritual warfare because he very, he knew very well, obviously, I could call my father. He'll send le uh, legions of angels uh, to stop this from obviously happening. Um, so he, there was already some sort of premise behind the reasons why he was saying the things he was saying. He wants you to obviously be sending legions uh, to stop the things that you were able to stop. There's just some things that you're not able to stop in all honesty. All, some of these things are just 100% a part of God's plan uh, and, and a part of God's uh, will. So you're going to find that on your own when you're not actually able to uh, stop some of the things that are happening, but you need to find that on your own. So I'm implying that you need to fight everything and anything. If something ends up failing, keep knocking on the door and the door will be open to you. I mean, these are basic biblical principles, but obviously we we already lived in this life and your entire life and all the suffrages that were in it were automatically, it should expose this to you what God's perfect plan of salvation is. All of it was a part of God's plan. So there was nothing you and I could not do. All of this was just foreordained. And predetermined before anything was even created. So, uh, this is all the script, all of your suffrages, all the hurts, all the crying, uh, all that is in the past, right? But all of it was part of God's perfect plan of salvation. Your future does not have to reflect or be the exact same as what your past actually was. Um, that's up to you and your own action, your own active role with Christ. But nevertheless, you have to be fighting and, and be. Uh, persistent in your fighting and whatever happens happens right it's all part of god's perfect plan of salvation so you should definitely be encouraged by that uh you should definitely be um praising god for everything that happened to you because it was all a part of god's perfect plan of salvation uh and not really be holding grudges against anyone not really uh, being angry towards a person for the wrong that they have done to you all of it was automatically a part of the script how many people have watched the te uh, a television show how many people have watched the movie how many people have watched the final product of a movie and the and the final product of a video game. These things themselves just teach us that there is absolutely nothing that we can do about the finished product that was already determined before they obviously sold the product that they sold. And this is the exact same thing that is this exact same principle that Christ himself uh, has done, has determined uh, from the beginning. He, he made the end from the beginning and then and the beginning from the end. Uh, and so there's not really much that anybody can really do about it, but just obviously uh, submit to this authority, submit to this plan, 
submit to being foreordained, submit to being predestined, what is it, predestination and foreordained, and submit to that authority. If you choose still not to submit to this authority, and if you still choose not to obviously um, hearken to it, and you're like, ah, oh, whatever, I don't really care about any of these things, obviously when you're in the lake of fire, you really have no reason to complain. Uh, I'm telling you to live. Uh, that's a part of my script. I'm telling you that you have to fight and you can't back down ever. I'm telling you that have you ever gave up in your life? Be encouraged by you not ever giving up in your life and you just continue plowing through. Uh, and that's essentially it. Uh, you have to be fighters. You have to be. Uh, you have to be fighting for this life and everything for it. This is already it's written in the scriptures in Revelations twelve how that they love not their lives even until death. If you don't, if you love your life more than Christ, automatically you're not worthy uh, to be a follower of Christ. If you love your life too much that you don't want to engage in spiritual warfare because you're afraid of actually dying, automatically you are not worthy of being a disciple of Christ. So these things are hundred percent. They're just basic biblical principles. We can all agree on these things. If you're scared of fighting and hitting the enemy where it hurts and being engaged in the spiritual warfare uh, and this all-out war. And then, unfortunately, you're not really worthy to be a disciple of Christ. And Christ is going to end up cutting you off and killing you because you're not even lukewarm. You're cold. You just want to do that. Obviously, Christ is able to see what these things actually are. He's able to see that you don't really have uh, much love for it. You love your life way more than you love Christ because you're not willing to have to suffer, have to endure some sort of tribulation uh, through this life for Jesus Christ because you actually are fighting for everything that Christ loves and not really getting in that way of thinking that well I don't have to get into it it's not really for anyone it's just for for those select few group of heroes that are going to save this earth I'm, I'm praying for you I'm helping you and other things like that which is good in itself but you seriously need to uh, be engaged in spiritual warfare don't be surprised if Christ ever grabs another person by the shirt and just tells them to wake up that's whatever christ is able to do whatever he wants he throws individuals into the lake of fire uh through his own power right so he's there's obviously not a new uh there's not there's not anything new to him right um christ is infinite in power he doesn't look like it. he looks like a normal man uh, but one hundred percent, he's infinite in power. So, um, the Father is infinite in power, presence, and knowledge, and that's it, right? But, um, what was I speaking on? You seriously have to be engaged in spiritual warfare. There is, there's absolutely no way around it. Um, if you don't want to preach about these things, especially if you have a, a big platform or an enormous platform, how you're actually able to uh, reach more individuals to be able to bring this type of awareness to their life by even bringing up scripture. That way they don't actually, um, what's the word? Uh, that way they don't actually try to justify the reasons why they're not actually engaged in spiritual warfare. If you even just bring these scriptures up that if you love your life, you're not worthy of being a Christ, a Christian, uh, obviously these individuals have already made their choice they only are into it for the worship for the praises of men that they obviously are receiving and that's it they don't really want to get into it they're not worthy at all of being a disciple of christ so obviously mark these individuals and expose them 100 percent if they're not able to uh or want to to teach uh spiritual warfare to all the amount of followers that they obviously have that's a lot of responsibility that christ himself has given to that individual that uh he obviously is holding these individuals accountable to that standard that you have to be engaged in spiritual warfare you cannot be afraid uh, of your life and, and what you might lose in it but you have to love christ more than you love your life and that's the reason why you're obviously going to win and there's no other reasons other than that and this is already written in Revelation uh, 12, how, and they love not their lives even unto death. So the only thing that was on their mind uh, was fighting in this all-out war for Jesus Christ and fighting uh, for everything that Christ himself obviously loves through binding and loosing, through breaking these curses to be able to cast these devils out and to remove these presences from off the face of this earth in a strategic manner to be able to, to rid this infestation of demonic activity and iniquity 
uh, that is abounding uh, more and more uh, on the face of this earth. But you, not at all, can never be those types of individuals who just uh, who just think that they have to do the bare minimum. I've been seeing a lot of posts online uh, about praying 15-second prayers. I'm telling you right now, they just cut it out. Uh, I've been praying for four hours for the past couple of days because Christ himself has been calling me to pray for four hours. He's out of, he's, and I speak in tongues. I pray in tongues, and it's no big deal. I ask Christ for the gift. I believe that I could receive the gift. I got the gift. I could even interpret tongues at the drop of a hat, whatever. Flip, uh, flip, uh, whatever the story this thing is. Uh, and I could do all, uh, I could heal myself. Uh, I could cast out devils. I could raise the dead. I could cleanse the lepers. Obviously, many different uh, miracle gifts. Uh, toying with the weather. I toy with the weather sometimes just because, uh, obviously, it's like my little thermostat and I'll crank it up if it ever gets too cold. Uh, and other things like that. Some other principles and stuff that people even do is that they're able to raise the body heat and the temperature. This is done by faith. But that's more of a carnal way of actually doing these things. Uh, so, uh, but these little 15 second prayers are not at all going to cut it with God whatsoever. He wants individuals to pray for an hour, for two hours, for three hours, and to just obviously make time uh, for prayer for 30 minutes, fi not even 15 minutes, in all honesty. I know some of you individuals do have families. Uh, you know, I could put myself in your shoes and just know that it's, it's a lot of work to raise a family. You have to be able to feed them, please them, uh, spend time with them, nurture them, uh, teach them and ensure that they're well nurtured and other things like that but um i know it's hard but you're seriously going to have to pray for your family if you're not going to do it for yourselves do it for your children uh, some individuals won't even do it for themselves and they won't even do it for the children either uh and it's, it's just sad it's just a sad case they just kick their feet up and they just say that god's grace is going to carry me through and you know, obviously, whatever, he's going to, he already knows how I am. He knows the type of faith. I believe in you, Lord. I'm praying for this victory, and I'm praying for this uh, deliverance. Hallelujah. I mean, these good principles in themselves, right? I mean, everybody agrees on that. These are basic biblical principles, but it's very carnal. I mean, you did that when you were probably first got saved, right? You're 10 years, 15 years, you're still doing the same exact things. There's no growth. There's no maturity whatsoever uh, in your walk with Christ. And he's able to see that. He's, well, what's going on? They're still going to that same church. So still teaching them the same old garbage. And it's, they're not growing. They're not maturing. And it is what it is. These individuals are going to end up getting cut off. No matter how many years of service they did, no matter how many times they obviously played in the choir or sang in the choir or whatever else they thought they did for god there was no real heart change and there was no real transformation inside of these individuals his lives uh, and so because of that they're obviously going to have to pay and suffer the consequences uh for the rebellion against god because it's essentially what it actually is is blatant rebellion against god uh because they just refuse to hearken to any of the actual real teachings of Christ. Uh, and, and they only adhere to the principles and the doctrines that the devil and the the false pastors are obviously feeding them. Uh, and so had they actually have heard Christ's voice and the gospels themselves, there would obviously there would obviously be some growth. There would obviously be some regeneration. There would obviously be a heart transformation. But because there is none of that, they didn't hearken to Christ's voice. They just heard these things. They're like, wow, this sounds pretty good. I'm saved by grace through faith and everything is gonna be going to be fine. I don't really have to kick my feet up. I live in America. I'm not gonna have to suffer persecution uh, and other things like that, which is obviously a flat out lie. Uh, if I have to suffer through persecution, like people trying to kill me for real, uh, like run me over and other things like that, right? Uh, it's, and other things where individuals try to find a way to kill me on a daily basis. And whenever I go out into public, you're not going to be any different. I learned that through my own firsthand experience that it doesn't matter where you live, whether you live in America or in Afghanistan, you're going to have to be persecuted for your faith. Uh, and, and that's really it. I hearken to that in 2018. I truly believe that in my heart that I didn't, 
I didn't think that I was going to have not suffer just because I lived in America. Uh, but the real revelation that I obviously received in 2018 was the fact that there was something very wrong with the gospel in America because these Christians were not um, being persecuted. They were not being martyred and nobody was dying for Christ. I understood and I don't know how I understood it, but I understood that obviously because the first century church and the body of Christ are one and the same and Christ is never changing and other principles under these guidelines. I knew uh, and I understood it well that there was something very wrong with this uh, gospel in America. And obviously all of its forms uh, without it and all the requirements of the real gospel uh, are not being met through this gospel that obviously is in America, regardless of the justifications and excuses that uh, Americans make on a daily basis concerning why they're not doing this and why this is not happening to them. You obviously have been cursed. And this is just what's written in the scriptures. If you believe in a false gospel, let them be accursed. This is essentially what has happened to all of these Christians in America. All of them are 100% cursed uh, by God for not obviously hearkening to the full gospel in itself that you were going to have to be persecuted. They didn't specify. No, uh, it doesn't matter what region you live in. I'm pretty sure Rome was pretty civilized in that time. It was even like America where individuals were just pretty cultured. They had good moral compasses. I know right now we, we, we don't really have paganism and other things like that, but still there's forms of paganism in, uh, in America. And, uh, and even um, just atheists, agnostic, and other things like that, the individuals adhere to these ideologies and philosophies that these people uh, hearken to are, are still forms of paganism. But... Uh, these individuals still in the first century church, they ended up getting persecuted for their faith. So that in itself obviously should just remove the cloak for their sin, that there were pretty cultured individuals in Rome. It's pretty obvious. We could read the gospels and testimonies of them themselves. Cornelius um, and Peter's vision. There's just so many testimonies and so many different accounts uh, to ensure that nobody is really able to be without excuse as to why they believe the doctrines that they believe in and why they obviously believe that the gospel they, that they believe is not cursed. It doesn't belong to the devil and that uh, they're actually saved by grace through faith. Uh, so obviously I pray that if you actually want to be delivered from that, if you actually want to be a part of this real gospel and the true gospel, that you will have to suffer persecution wherever you may live. Uh, I pray that these curses are broken. That way you're actually able to cast out the devils. Uh, if you don't have the faith to be able to cast these devils out, um, I'll just cast them out. It's no problem or issue, but you seriously need to put these practices to work. Uh, and exercise them because it's only going to get worse you're going to be very heavily dependent on another individual when this in itself is obviously uh the great commission that christ gave to us to make disciples out of all nations through me teaching you and showing you that it's easy you're able to do the same things and practice for your life to be able to go and teach another person and teach them the same exact things that is so simple and so easy to be able to break these curses and obviously more and more disciples are being made uh, in Jesus Christ's name, right? Uh, but still, you're required to obey the law of Moses. If you don't think you have to obey the law of Moses, you're cursed. I'll just break that curse right now also. That way you're actually confident, and that way you actually return to your uh, right mind. Because I'm sure as soon as I said that, you automatically got triggered. Uh, it was like a light switch. The devil was is hearing this message uh, in itself, and I already know how these things obviously work in the second heaven. Anything that has to deal with repentance, anything that has to deal with you changing uh, from your reckless lifestyle or any type of lifestyle that you obviously live that is contrary to the word of God, these devils will automatically get agitated and restless and they're doing everything they can in their power to ensure that they're, that they're able to stop you and to try to convince you that what I said is somehow wrong or is somehow uh, is deviating from the real gospel and somehow deviating from uh, their theology and doctrines that they obviously have learned. So this is all uh, manipulated emotionally. So these individuals are emotionally cursed. And these emotions themselves affect their will. And they're not really able to um, uh, to actually will out uh, the obedience to the law of Moses. And obviously they throw all types of philosophies, right? They'll be like, well, I'm afraid that I'm going to put myself under the, uh, the law of Moses. But realistically... Uh, it's, it's the same exact principle as you obeying Christ and just listening to Christ. You're just obeying Christ because He is your Lord. 
and you're just obeying the law of Moses because Jesus Christ is your Lord. And that's essentially it. You don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't depend on your obedience to Jesus Christ um, as a means of salvation. You just know that because Jesus Christ is your Lord, obviously you're going to do everything you can in, in your power to be able to obey him. So uh, because he is your Lord, you're not yourself. You're a new creation in Christ. The old is is gone and the new has come right and essentially these are the types of principles that you really need to be living by because um oh excuse me uh because this is essentially just biblical uh you have learned way too many lies on from the secular lie itself that it teaches you that hereditaryism nothing is hered and inherited all these things are curses all these things are a hundred percent uh, you're paying for the sins of the fathers and you're paying for the iniquities of your ancestors and the and the and whatever else right all the way down to you up from the beginning of your family tree you have to pay for every single one of those sins if they were made unbroken from your wife's side from your side um from both sides of your family and from both sides of their family as well. So God is obviously requiring these from your hand and from your life. And so you're going to continue living in suffrage, going homeless, going broke, because the devil sees these legalities, he sees these iniquities inside of your life. And he obviously wants you to, well, not him, but Christ obviously wants you to let these things go. Uh, but you're stubborn, you're too stubborn to recognize that, that he wants you to obviously let these things go. And obviously, you don't really recognize it. The devil essentially wants what his what is his uh, back. He wants it uh, in return, and he'll obviously frustrate you, destroy your life, just so you obviously let these uh, sinful practices go and they, they return back to him. Because whatever is a part of the kingdom of darkness belongs to the kingdom of darkness, and whatever is a part of the kingdom of light belongs to the kingdom of light. And so you remain in this suffrage and in this state of um, unhappiness, I guess. Or there's another word where you're not really content with your life and whatever else, depressed, uh, bipolar, uh, unstable, and everything else in between of what I mentioned. Uh, because the devil is essentially tormenting you, right? And he's just trying to um, to get what obviously belongs to him back to him. But you don't really recognize it like that. Christ is obviously putting these suffrages inside of your life so you're actually able and willing to let go of these sins because these things themselves, these suffrages are obviously um, are hurting you. So obviously, um, if you put your hand in the fire, what are you going to do automatically? You're going to pull it back. You're going to be like, okay, it hurts. I'm not going to do that again. It's the same exact principle, but you individuals stay with your hand on the fire not willing to let these things go and not really equating that you actually can let these things go and that you could just move your hand as well as just these pastors themselves didn't really teach you these types of things they keep you very ignorant about what actually is happening what christ himself actually demands from you and uh that there's a way out uh, they discourage you in a subtle way. They keep you distracted 100%. And they just say, God, I believe in you and all this. And I have this faith in you. I receive it. Months and years have gone by since you haven't received it because you still live in this way of thinking where you don't actually take action and you don't take an active role. And you've never even broken a curse. Nobody's ever taught you how to break a curse. And because of that, you just continue waiting on God's timing when this wasn't when one of those things where it was on God's timing. This is one of those things where Christ wanted you to get up from the floor, get up from the bed, get up from wherever and to fight for your life and to fight for your soul and to fight for your salvation. Uh, because obviously narrow is the way and this whole life is a battlefield. It's a battleground until you get to heaven. All of it is just a fight for holiness, to remain holy, to remain pure. That's your whole life while you're walking here on the face of this earth, is you fighting for your life. Uh, and, and essentially, this is in, in every aspect is you fighting for your life. You're fighting against these, in, these future tempters and the future temptations that come inside of your life. You're fighting for your life in uh, the old sins and the past sins, generational curses and generational sins and sins of the fathers. To ensure they're not affecting your discipleship with Christ and and other things like that, and you're just fighting for your life to remain holy, to stay holy, to be sanctified, uh, and to be clean in the inside of your vessel that the outside may look clean, and to wash your robes in the blood of the Lamb.
And that's essentially it about them. Uh, and so they spend their whole life just wasting their time, just waiting for something to happen when in reality, there's just so many things. I've gone homeless and I, I went homeless. And because I went homeless, I didn't break any of the curses. I wasn't aware of these things. I was too scared to fight the devil and just so many different things. I ended up going to jail, ended up being homeless and just so many different things. I could say about my inability to fight what actually ended up happening and other things that fall into the same category. And so I could obviously testify like, obviously, I bear witness of these things that I don't even, I seriously do not even know what was going to happen if I never engaged in spiritual warfare. Uh, I will continue waiting on the Lord's timing. Uh, there was a period in my time where I would just wait for the Lord's timing and I would not get the results that I wanted to see. And I would be getting into so much torments and so much torture until finally I obviously ended up fighting the devil. And that's when I obviously got to deliverances and the results that I obviously wanted to see 100% truth 100% factual what I said earlier how Christ is tired of individuals just waiting on the Lord's timing and those instances when I obviously got the deliverance I, I got I had to get up from the ground from the and I had to obviously fight the enemy and beat and use the MMA that I learned and the MMA that I obviously know against the devil to obviously whoop him and beat him up and that's essentially it. You have to do these things yourself and find out for yourself. Maybe you, maybe that's exactly what Christ himself uh, wants you to do. He obviously wants you to put these things to practice and see these things for yourself. Uh, even right now, that was Christ. He's saying practice right away. Uh, he was giving the command. He wants you to put these things to practice that way you actually see for yourself how much time you truly have wasted in your life and what you really have been doing with your time all through this one little fiery dart and through this one little belief uh, that I have to wait on God's timing and I shouldn't have to fight for it because God already knows and whatever and, and things like that. I mean, I'm genuinely curious to know how many individuals actually receive some sort of deliverance after they finally stopped uh, being the types of individuals that they just waited for crisis timing uh, and they actually uh, saw for themselves and, and saw if it was one of those types of situations and circumstances where they had to get up from off the ground and actually begin fighting and engaging themselves in spiritual warfare. Because it's true, man. Honestly, this is uh, it's just 100% through my own testimony. Nobody can convince you of anything uh, that the tongues have uh, the gift of tongues has ceased when you obviously can speak in tongues. Nobody can convince you to wait on the Lord's timing when you obviously have found out for yourself that Christ Himself does not want you living in that way of thinking, and He wants you to obviously fight and to stop being so lazy and to stop being so passive and st stop being so pacified. These things, one hundred percent, obviously, when I put it like that, it makes it easier to see. God should not want. I should not be lazy for God. He is a king. He is the king of kings. And here I am just waiting on the Lord's time when I should be serving him. Even serving him to be able to serve myself. In Jesus Christ's name. But still many individuals are not even going to put this to practice. They're going to hear it. They're going to nod their heads. Excuse me. And they're just going to be like, whatever. Uh, I'll see for myself. I'll pray about it. Maybe Christ himself is obviously going to tell me through scriptures. If you're not able to discern that this is Christ or the Father shepherding his sheep through me, uh, trying to tell you and, and to try to get you to wake up and to stop living in that way of thinking where you're just lazy and you don't want to lift a finger to do anything, but you want God to force you to lift your finger, you're going to end up perishing and end up going into the lake of fire just off that belief alone, just off that fiery dart uh, alone. Now, obviously, if there's good, fire, if there's bad fiery darts, there's obviously good fiery darts. But God is obviously able to control another individual who isn't really faced by the fiery darts of the devil uh, through these thoughts themselves and uh, these poisonous uh, fiery darts that are preventing individuals from even being able to see for themselves that they've been wasting too much time waiting on the Lord's time when they should just see is this one of those circumstances where I need to fight or whatever just you know but um, so the good fiery darts 
just do good works. It's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Be wise to do good and be simple with evil. Uh, and obviously the reason that is said is because people typically overcomplicate the evil things uh, of God and what God himself obviously defines as evil. And they just go on doing the same old iniquities and committing the same old sins. Uh, but being wise to do good, obviously you're able to bear more fruit. You're able to produce more fruit. You're able to do more good works because you're really meditating and dwelling on the, well, the wisdom of goodness and good works as well. Which many individuals just fail to, uh, to really sit down and think about. Uh, many individuals just have basic integrity, basic morality. You know, I can't be a scumbag. I can't punch this guy in the face. Whatever. Uh, these things aren't really praiseworthy in themselves. What are the praiseworthy ones? Are obviously the teachings of Christ to love your neighbors as yourself, or to love your enemies as yourself. And to uh, to pray for those that persecute you, to bless those that curse you, uh, and to pray for those that obviously use you in spite. So these are generally good things. More often than not, people are very unforgiving towards uh, the types of actions that they and types of treatments that they receive from another individual. And because of that, they're obviously get into this petty way of thinking, uh, which is just rooted in some sort of childhood trauma or some sort of trauma in itself. What you need to deliver yourself from and see for yourself what is inside of you that you actually have received from your childhood trauma that is still affecting you to this day that you forgot about, you shrugged off, and that's it. Uh, but um, these things in themselves are obviously causing you to be bitter, causing you to be petty, uh, and this is essentially why you have bitter seeds inside of you. That little event that ended up happening to you when you were a child, obviously, it's, it was planted inside of you. The seed was planted inside, and it grew up in, to be a nice, big, old, healthy tree that produces nothing but bad fruit. So this is like a factory of producing evil fruits and producing evil actions of jealousy, envy. I know bitterness, obviously, automatically when you get bitter, you begin to look at another individual's life, what they have and what you don't have. You begin to compare another individual's life. So the real issue isn't really uh, trying to find a way out of your not being content, but you really addressing and confronting the situations that happened to you when you were a kid, confronting the situations of, you know what, I probably am bitter, or confronting the situations that, you know what, maybe I haven't really released some of these individuals from my heart. And I haven't really released them or forgave them whatsoever. And because of that, regardless of the situation, it's better to be safe than sorry. You don't want to find out in the great white throne judgment thinking you were this super Christian and that you were doing all the good works of God with a merry heart. But in reality, you had resentment inside of your heart. You had a bitterness, unforgiveness, rancor, jealousy, envy. All these things were inside of your heart and you didn't even recognize it and didn't really notice. You treated individuals on the basis of the event just like it barely happened uh, to you. And you hated this individual. And so obviously you threw your entire life away just because I, just because you were you recognize that more, more, more often than not you were obviously in a good mood and other things like that. But you never really addressed these issues and you never really confronted the situations that needed to be confronted and needed to be addressed so be better to be safe than sorry uh, just confess that you are forgiveness because everybody is automatically that's pride that's going to blind your eyes and you're never going to get out of that vortex because you, you're going to keep justifying yourself you're going to continue uh depending on your own uh self and your own means of i got this your own willpower to be able to define whether you are bitter or whether you aren't bitter so and just confess it, you are bitter. Uh, break these curses that are definitely going to stop you from, from being able to cast these devils out. They've already been placed here strategically by the devil to ensure that you actually get half delivered and not really fully delivered, which is something that you need to understand as well, is to think like the devil and to really be able to um, to be in that man of war state of mind. I already have been accustomed to living in that mindset and living in that way of thinking where uh, that to the point where obviously everything that I do and everything that I see, I have to fight everything and anything, 
regardless, especially if it's hidden. Those are the main things that annoy me when they remain hidden. And because they remain hidden, uh, they end up catching me off guard. And so they're being 100% sneaky. And just because they're right there hidden, I don't really acknowledge them. Everybody acknowledges what causes them pain and suffrage and other things like that. But it's really the hidden ones that do the most damage in a person's life, which you need to hearken to and you need to understand as well. Excuse me, I'll be right back. So, so yeah, uh, so these situations need to be obviously addressed uh, because you're taking out, so let's say that, okay, maybe you were bitter when you were like a teenager or somebody did you wrong, somebody hurt you from this bitterness or you were in a relationship with somebody and this person cheated on you uh, and maybe it made you bitter, you got over it, so you thought you, um, you partied little life away you had you let go of these feelings but you never really addressed any of these situations and you never really addressed any of these issues you just more or less shrugged it off i get i'll get over it when i get over it you thought you got over it because you forgot it but in reality this seed that was planted by the devil uh was obviously it remained in your heart and because of that obviously you get into these relationships with another individual and you don't really recognize it, but the, obviously this past trauma that affected you, obviously affected you. You're taking out this frustration on another individual. You're jealous. You have trust issues. You're not really able to confide in, in your partner and in your marriage that you obviously have. I've already been in that situation as well where I was with this girl, right? I'm using my own experience. And this woman was, obviously she had... Uh, some sort of trust issues in her life, and because she had this trust issue in her issues in her life, uh, whenever I would talk to a girl, whenever I would talk to anyone else, she already had understood that I wasn't going to do anything to uh, or with another girl, but she would still be mad at the fact that another girl would obviously be trying it to begin with, and once she obviously was able to recognize and see that. Uh, she had trust issues with me, not really trust issues with me, but when she realized that what the real problem obviously was, she was able to recognize and see that I wasn't going to do anything with her either way. She was, she obviously let that uh, emotion go. She let that situation go and she was able to be perfectly fine and content with, excuse me, uh, with me being able to interact with another individual, another person, another sister in Christ, and and other things like that, right? 
So obviously there was something inside of her life that was causing her to to be, you know, obviously she was she was using the the pretense of no, I'm mad at this girl because, uh, you know, I already know how girls are and other things like that, but. I but then obviously when she found out that I wasn't going to do anything with her either way, that's when she was finally able to let that um that way of thinking go. So I know this is an example. Uh, hopefully you're able to be taught by it. Hopefully you're able to you're able to be l- to to learn the easy way, uh, and not really learn uh, the hard way because uh, this girl was obviously feeling some sort of emotion. She, the flesh was getting stirred up. While I was actually interacting with another sister in Christ, when in reality she had nothing to worry about, and it was more or less a justification from the devil to try to remain and have this presence inside of her life, uh, to ensure that obviously it, it was stay inside of her life. She's like, no, I know you. I know you're not gonna do anything with her and other things like that. But it's just her. She was obviously able to finally be delivered from that way of thinking where she would just be so mad at another individual and she really stopped caring uh, and it was able to really cope with these situations in a healthy manner that you know what maybe i shouldn't be mad you know what you know and not everybody is like that or it's not even it is what it is it's, it's just like How do I word it? The real one at fault, obviously, she was able to see what was actually happening. And she stopped, obviously, letting, letting this devil remain and stay inside of her life under the guise that I know how women are. I sh- I'm, it's not that I'm jealous, but uh, I'm just mad because blah 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 right obviously the devil was going to use that situation and that emotion in itself uh for uh for a plan in the future or maybe he was actually using that plan to obviously get her bitter to obviously get her jealous and to make her mad because these situations are essentially what happens down the line the snowball rolls down the mountain years and years and years and and what happens? Obviously, this thing just becomes enormous. Having never been dealt with, having never been uh, confronted, the situation just gets so bad, and the situation is now worse than it was when it was just a little tiny snowflake. So really cut the head off the snake as soon as possible. That way you're not actually uh, dealing with these giant, enormous snowballs that have been rolling down Mount Everest for years and years and you haven't even flinched, you haven't even batted your eye, or even acknowledged it, or even think you have a problem. And yeah, but I'm going to talk more about the networking of the devil, because obviously this is how he's able to use every individual on the face of this earth. This is how he's able to puppeteer a person. This is why you get into car accidents. This is why you get into freak accidents. This is why these types of things obviously happen, and it's because of the iniquity that he's able to use another individual you can't catch another person who's not going to speed. Uh, but obviously all those little race car drivers he's able to use. Uh, and those whatever tuner cars, he's able to use those types of individuals to get them to get into a car accident and uh, and kill another individual. Obviously, you don't realize how smart the devil is. You don't real, And you obviously don't realize and recognize what his plans actually are, how he really actually is. What he can and can't do with these iniquities. And obviously to him, the sky's the limit with this iniquity. That just remains going untouched, unbroken, and not delivered. And so obviously everything is going off without a, anything, without a bump in the road or anything. The devil's just smooth. What is it? What is that called? Uh, they, may, they must love... Oh, wait, wait. They must love Christ and God more than their partner or anyone else. And the problem is solved. Honestly, this seems to be the main issue. Uh, I, I kind of forgot what I was just talking about. Uh, 
I read that sentence. Oh, uh, yeah, but addressing these situations that are actually there. Just man up about these situations for real. There's no point in you beating around the bush. There's no point in you actually living in denial. There's no point in you not actually seeing for yourself if you actually are bitter or unforgiving or anything of the sort. And that's it. There's no reason for you to just be confident in your abilities, but be confident and knowing that you probably messed up more than once in your life. So, so yeah. Uh, but definitely, they must love Christ and God more than their partner or anyone else, and problem is solved. I honestly don't even bother getting into a relationship with anyone who doesn't, who hasn't even already acknowledged and recognized that their relate their um discipleship with christ is 100 percent more important than marriage 100 percent more important than anything that their little heart desires and delights and the most important thing this is just something that i myself realized god himself taught me uh about that is to just continue seeking christ 100 percent, and you'll be more than content with just christ himself I know it sounds weird, you know, but obviously it's not that I enjoy being single, but I realistically don't have a need or a desire to be in a relationship or, or those types of things. It's just I'm perfectly content with Christ himself, and and that's fine. And you seriously need to get in that way of thinking that it's just fine to, to be alone. It's just fine to live like that. And I realistically can't be prioritizing getting married over Jesus Christ and what Christ himself and the work that Christ himself wants me to do. So the networking that the devil, that the devil is obviously using uh, to, to get individuals into car accidents and freak accidents, all of it is just based on the premise of you not actually fighting, you not actually delivering these curses and actually breaking these curses and delivering these people to ensure that you obviously are stopping the grounds for the devil to be able to function uh, and flow so freely without anyone stopping him whatsoever. In Jesus Christ, and then Name, amen. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit what else you wanted to say because it's more or less the same repeated message over and over again. But uh, spiritual warfare, fight, engage in spiritual warfare to be able to perfect your eternal character. Uh, Christ himself obviously desires that from you. That's why he wants you to obey him and the law of Moses because obviously these uh, practices of obedience um, perfect your fruits and you're able to bear more fruit and you, you're able to bear fruit of your own through the actual commandments and your obedience to uh, Christ's commands and the law of Moses and that should be your number one priority breaking these curses and to be able to be more efficient and to be a more efficient disciple of Christ should be a priority in itself I pray that the graces are loose inside of your vessel, that the curses are broken that will cause you to be hindered from receiving these graces that you obviously need, and that you receive a double portion of oil in every aspect of your life that you need to apply that principle to, as well as in general. Uh, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Um, hmm. Also, the blessings, the gifts, and anything else that I might have forgotten, I might have forgotten, probably forgot. Be loose inside of your vessel. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Mm, good night, uh, good afternoon, good morning, and...
That's it. Thank you. Watch my video. Watch my videos. Yeah, my other account got uh, deleted, but it's about to be back up in a couple of days. Uh, so see you on that account from this point on, from that point on. Uh, thank you. Be gracious. Be graceful. Be wise. Pray for wisdom. Pray for discernment. Pray for help. Amen.